Hi, I'm John Barnes, and you're watching Redmen TV. Hello, welcome to the Redmen TV. Liverpool just drawn 2 2 with Exeter City in the FA Cup third round in a big BBC hoping for a giant killing wank fest that never was. Uh, I've asked you for your thoughts on the match via the medium of Twitter. I'm going to read through some of the best and worst and what have you of them in a moment. Uh, but as always, please do let me know your thoughts on anything in the match and discussion points in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up, of course. Do it now. The video could be shit, but you know what? Do it now because I've asked nicely. Um, anyway, I, as I say, I asked you for your thoughts on the game. Let's get... Uh, let's get stuck straight into them. Uh, Abdulaziz Sally says the youngsters play better than the more experienced players. Absolutely, Partic I think particularly in the in the first half, you know, and it's a weird one because I guess where do you draw the line on on youngsters? Because uh, Zhao Teixeira should, by all accounts, be a, a senior player. And I thought he was probably the best player on the pitch in the, for the for the first half. He he was the one who, when the ball came to him. And he was he was turning into the man, and he was he was bursting through, and making things happen. He was looking to play little through balls and stuff. Thought he looked great, but he's like twenty two going, but like probably like twenty three before too long. So he's not young, young. But the way I think, I think it's probably more it's more a case, I guess, of actually the older players were a bit shit, and therefore the younger players were better because Ben Teke did nothing in the first half. Enrique looked shaky as fuck, which I guess is to be expected. Bogdan was just full on shit um, you know so these are the guys who were supposed to be the ones who were standing up and leading the team and by comparison they looked you know like the players who didn't deserve to be in that team so completely agree um, at Macca 2021 the kids will smash them on a decent surface yeah Chris and I touched upon this one we've done our match reaction we did it together tonight because we thought fuck it why not uh, we had a little bit more of an in-depth chat about the match um, yeah, I mean, you'd like to think, and, and one of the points I raised was that I think Exeter, you know, more used to those kind of conditions, and it looked a little bit more suited to them. Whereas, so they kind of grew into the game, was I think our players kind of once they got over the initial adrenaline of it all, realised it just didn't it didn't suit them, and it was always going to favour Exeter the long run because, as I say, just because it's a lot more of a familiar set of conditions to them or whatever, which is which is a bit of a pissy excuse because the point is. If Exeter can play well on that surface, theoretically, you put them on a good surface, they'll be good. Um, but you'd like to think, you know, playing on the carpet of Anfield, um, that the, if we do go with the kids again for the replay, then they should fare a lot better, theoretically, anyway. Uh, okay, Chris Day at C Day 1984. I never want to see Enrique in a Liverpool shirt again in my life. Uh, good effort by the kids, though. Hashtag match reaction. Yeah, poor old Enrique. Uh, we, we, yeah, agreed. I don't think, don't think it's worth saying anymore, is it? Agreed. Uh, at four foot two, Macha, uh, a few of the youngsters did look decent. More service to Ben Teke, and we would be laughing. So there's a few Ben Teke ones here, so I'll do a few of them back to back. Uh, at Jack Taylor at VGM Taylor says, just give the ball to Ben Teke. For fuck's sake. Uh, whereas Stefan Hobson says, Ben Teche and Bogdan are wank. Uh, Enrique done well, I thought, with short game time. Smith, Ojo and Sinclair look promising. The Ben Teche ones, a weird one, and we had a proper semi-heated debate in the in the studio, the four of us watching the game. Um, the ben Teche should be, without a shadow of a doubt, the absolute best player on that pitch, you know, by... An absolute country man. You can refer back to his transfer fee, oh, £32 million, pound, blah, 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 blah. You could buy Exeter for the amount of money that you bought Ben Teche for, and a lot of people would rather have Exeter in just on the bench, like the, like the ground and everything, uh, than Ben Teche, more mobile. Um, some might say, not me. Uh, but but equally, and I think I, I actually do agree with the sentiments from both Macher and from Jack Taylor, that when you get the ball to Ben Teche, things... He's got a better chance of making things happen when he's got the fucking football. And I think if you just get into a position where you're hoping you're just launching balls up to him, even bang average centre-halves are going to have a good chance in those kind of one-on-one -on -one battles. It's literally just jumping up and heading the ball. It's a fundamental. You could say, well, Ben Teke should be good too. But defenders always have the advantage. You're playing long, straight balls down the pitch. Defenders have always got a yard or two advantage. But it's just... It's just physicality. It's nothing to do with well. There's obviously a, a, a layer of a level of skill and technique involved, but he's that's just it's agricultural football in League Two. League Two is not the Champions League. There's a lot more of that type of football that happens at the lower levels of the game. 
which is why go back years you had the likes of Matt Smith playing for Oldham and giving us a ton of time because they have those those type of things those type of situations are far more common than skillful amazing players doing doing the business and what have you so Ben Teche was always going to struggle with that kind of service but given services feet as we saw for like, literally like a, a glimpse in the second half when we're passing the ball going direct to feet getting guys running in beyond them just letting them do little flicks and stuff he looked loads better and the problem is is that I feel like I'm just it's like banging it against the wall it's like it's a point where you think well what's the point in defending because it's not like he actually really created anything anything out of that and you should be more than just looking okay you should be looking okay and, and score because you should be better you're just getting into a negative spiral uh, negative spiral I just say listen just fuck it give Ben Teke more service and then I think and then and then when he fucks it up judge him judge him more then but when he's not getting the ball played up to him I don't see really what what he's what he's gonna do anyway I'm no, the people who've got their opinions on him have them asked uh, anyway Mab underscore uh, LFC says Alan Shearer and Danny Murphy are wankers I agree on the first one I'm not, I am not. don't agree so much on Danny Murphy Alan Shearer would look like he was beaked off his tits at half time he was just shouting shouting about football and cliched shit he's garbage can't stand him Danny Murphy's fine he's just like a slightly more interesting slightly less cliched version of Michael Owen which doesn't sound like a compliment and it's not uh, no, I don't mind. I don't mind Danny Murphy. Well, the good thing about Danny Murphy actually on on the BBC coverage of it was that he was actually judging the young players the way you should young, judge young players rather than judging them like the fucking first teamers and every time they fuck something up, the fucking shit. So no, that's good. You know, they're getting into the right position, they're doing the right things, and ultimately he understands what it's like to be a young player. And he understands the pressure placed upon them, and he wasn't adding to that, which I thought actually credit to Danny Murphy to be perfectly honest. On the other hand, Alan Shearer just looks like a fucking egg, and he can fuck off. <laughs> um, uh, at Ben Mason eighty five, job done. Kids given the job to stay in the cup. They have Benteke, Bogdan, and Enrique equals awful. Yeah, um, got some exciting talent, nonetheless. Yeah, I think that's what I think that's the way this game has to be judged. Is that uh, let's put it this way: you, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. If we put the kids out and they win, Liverpool have devalued the FA Cup, and we we made a mockery. And Cop doesn't understand the competition, even with all the injuries. That's the that's just the narrative. Um, if we if the kids go and beat them, then the story is. Wow, how brave is it to give these kids an opportunity in such an important game, blah, blah, blah. Simple fact of the matter is they've kind of neither here nor there. We'd love to have less games, but I would, I would have no problem with putting the vast majority of those young players in that team for that replay at Anfield with the crowd behind them. I go, go on, go and do it again. The, particularly the ones who are impressed, you know, yeah, the, the ones even who showed a little bit of a, a little glimpse of it, I, I, I go with them and say, go ahead. And, and I'm going to give you full faith and how much potential confidence that could give them, I think is a very a very encouraging thing, if nothing else. Um, at Paul Morkham, well fought game. Plenty of promise from all the team. Teixeira and Ojo should be given a chance in the first team. Probably could have crossed more. Agree with all those sentiments, mate. Um, at Cop Connection, we're weak on corners. In other news, water is wet. And Bogdan is shit. Couldn't have summed it up any better. Adam Bogdan. I put him. We. I did a, an injured eleven video on the on the YouTube channel. Presume you all watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I had to put Adam Bogdan in as my injured goalkeeper because I said he'd basically killed his career to the point where he might as well be injured after his Watford performance. If it was any doubt, it's been put without a shadow of a doubt because of that absolutely fucking. What is he doing? For I mean, he get he is fouled. But really, Adam, really. No, tell him, right, he's just wank, isn't he? Um, and we thought, people say, oh, fucking Brad Jones. No, look, Brad Jones was, Brad Jones was shit as well. I, I, not like, yeah, probably even worse. If, if I let me know your thoughts. You think Brad Jones is better than Adam Bogdan? Go mad, go mad. That's what comments are for. Uh, anyway, leave us your thoughts on anything we've discussed there. If you agree, agree or disagree, go again, whatever, man. Uh, have your say. Are you happy that we the, the kids made it through and have taken it to a replay? Are you stressed that it's going to be more games on a on a taxed senior squad? All that shit. Do check out some more match analysis. Chris and I had a good, a good old chin wag on this match. That's, that'll be on the YouTube channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, please. Because, look, I said, I said please. There's the thing. That means I'm nice. Uh, keep smiling, and we'll see you back here next week.
Um, it kind of felt like 13, fact. 14 again then. Yeah. It was the sort yeah, of, yeah, it was yeah. the intensity that the team started with, wasn't it? You know, yeah. first 20 minutes, they really shut the tempo, didn't they? Yeah. And I don't think that's any sort of disrespect to, to Brendan, because um, you know how, how I feel about Brendan and what he's done.